Hello, public opinion aficionados, and welcome to Rasmussen Reports, the only pollster that, to my knowledge, is the victim of a malicious hack that actually went in and deleted some of our data. Really crazy, and believe it or not, this comes on top of the fact that in the last year, we were swatted at least three times that I know about it at our office. There's some really deranged folks out there, but they weren't able to come between us and bringing you the news, which is that in our newly released poll today, for the first time, Donald Trump has regained the momentum against Kamala Harris. And we'll go into what that means. But a little bit about the hack. Somebody got into our survey software and they spent basically five minutes in there last night. We were able to catch it because of the logs. We have quality checks in place. And what they did was literally spend almost all of that five minutes deleting the online data that we collected last night, which would have been our first post-debate data. Now, luckily, we're able to just go back into the field and get new data this morning, but we're never really going to know what that data looked like, which just kind of hurts me personally. But we still have a complete massive poll, 2,400 likely voter responses. And what we're basically talking about here is 6% of that data, of that poll, comes from you know 12 hours after we would have liked it to. Not a big deal. So we're going to get into those cross tabs, but let's take a quick look at the race. And there is not a lot of movement on the Real Clear Politics aggregate. The only new poll here is this New York Post poll that shows Harris plus three, bringing her to 1.3 points overall. Kind of weird here that their data came out post debate, 910 to a 911. But the most fresh data otherwise here is as of September 6th, which is almost a week ago. There's an election like two months away, folks. Now, I tried to find the cross tabs to this New York Post poll, and I wasn't able to. Um, but basically, they have Trump down three when in their polling two weeks ago, he was down four. That's a long time ago. It's really hard to attribute this to debate performance, to be honest with you. Although they did have one slide that showed what people thought of the debate. Only 62% of Republicans thought Donald Trump won, although also only 9% said Kamala Harris. Although maybe they should have put, you know, ABC News in here. Maybe that's why 22% said no one. But among Democrats, 91% said Kamala Harris won. But what's fascinating to me is the lack of independence here, because that's what this all comes down to. Ostensibly, this debate was about convincing independence who to vote for. And we're going to get into that a little bit later. We'll also check in on poly market again. I don't think these folks are incredibly accurate, but they're pretty useful to get a knee-jerk reaction to where the race is at. Donald Trump was up, I think, 52 to 46 going into the debate, and now he's down by one. So call that a seven-point shift left. But in the grand scheme of things, look at the chart. That's bupkis. Donald Trump and Kamala Harris are locked in an existential tie in the betting markets. And if this debate really was a win, you would see a lot more movement here. And so in our opinion, not even looking at the numbers, the debate performance, it was a mess. The moderators were horrible. Trump probably could have done better. He got some zingers off. I don't know how viral they'll go. But we said that she needed to come out and crush it. And she did among Democrats, but they're all going to vote for her anyways. So in the grand scheme of things, this is probably not going to move the needle at all. And now here are the cross tabs of the week. And it is an even bigger sample than normal because we collected more data over the last couple of days. Almost 2,400 U.S. likely voters gives it a margin of error about plus or minus 2%. And Donald Trump is winning 49 to 47% at the margin of error. So, you know, pretty much a clear win and if you look at the unrounded numbers, it is 49.3 to 46.8. So really outside the margin of error at two and a half points, but whatever. Last week, it was Trump plus one and the New York Times agreed with us. I wonder if in the next poll, New York Times will come up with a Trump plus two lead but I think with them, you're probably going to have to wait for another three or four weeks to see the next data points. Now, in the last poll, I think it was Harris 47, Trump 48. So Donald Trump clawed back a point. But the numbers are increasing. Kamala Harris, I think 47% is about the highest she's done in any of the polls. 
Joe Biden had a hard time getting over 40% in our numbers early in the race, got into like 42, 43%. So she has had the momentum over the last six weeks, clawing her way up from 43% to 47% and bringing the Trump-Harris race from Trump plus five all of the way down to last week, Trump plus one. But again, for the first time, Donald Trump has turned it around like we expected him to do because August is in the rearview mirror and the DNC is now a distant memory. So between now and the election, Kamala Harris has really got to look for some major public wins to move these numbers because, to be honest with you, Donald Trump's been around for almost 10 years. I think these 49%, those people, their minds are made up. So Trump is winning by an astounding 12 points among men. That's one of the highest leads we've had in a while, but also this is one of the higher Kamala Harris leads we've had among women in a while too. Six points here. I think these numbers are probably what they will be on election day. And 18 to 39-year-olds looks a lot lefter than it did before. Also, I think that makes sense. Six-point lead for Kamala Harris. Maybe it's a memory of the DNC event. Maybe it's the Taylor Swift endorsement. I guess we'll never know. Uh, and I have the 65 and older is going back Donald Trump in this poll by eight, which is the biggest lead we've had among them in a long time. Like, listen, some of this is just the way the dice rolls. Sometimes you get really conservative 18 to 39-year-olds. Sometimes you get really conservative old folks. We are approaching 10,000 data points of Donald Trump versus Kamala Harris. So what we will be probably putting out is a massive combined set of cross tabs. So we really see what the internal demographics are. White voters now go to Donald Trump way less than they have in a very long time. And Donald Trump is getting a much bigger black and Hispanic vote than in any of our polling, especially recently. I think he's been in the 20s every single time we've asked among black voters. And Hispanic voters have been closer to a tie. Again, I think some of that is a little bit of an up and down. And we're really understating the white support in this particular sample. The crossover advantage is zero. 82 to 16, 82 to 16, a perfect split among Democrats and Republicans. And of course, in this poll, Democrats have a plus two advantage, which gives them more votes here than Republicans. But also in this poll, Trump is winning by 12 points among independents, the biggest we've seen in a long time. And again, maybe we got more independents that formerly were Republicans now, and that's why our Republican numbers are smaller and the crossover advantage is zero. We'll see when we combine it all into one big soup, but it comes down to independence. And I've said this over and over again. We're going to look at some interesting data. Whoever wins the election, whatever pollster is right, is the one that nailed independence. We show independence going Trump. The New York Times shows independence going Trump. Rich Barris, the People's Pundit, shows independence going Trump. And a lot of the left-wing pollsters do not. And as I talked about, here are the daily overnight sample points, again, with a plus or minus five-point margin of error. And only one of these data points is post-debate. The stuff collected on the 10th was all like six, seven, eight o'clock Eastern time. And Donald Trump and Kamala Harris last night and this morning were tied 48 to 48, a zero-point margin. And there was a zero-point margin just two days ago. But if you look at what, just from the straight line average of what the last five data points that went into this poll were, that's 9, 14 divided by 5, you know, less than three points. And with the demographic weightings, that's how you get to roughly two and a half points. You look at the five period moving averages here. For Trump, it's about 49%. For Kamala Harris, it's a little over 46. So this data point was useful in helping her climb up a little bit. We'll see where it goes from here. I think by, by Monday morning, we'll have had three post-debate data points. I think that that will probably be a good time to make an assessment that the debate pretty much changed nobody's minds. But one more fascinating thing to look at. I don't want you to just take it from us that it all comes down to the independence and you got to trust us. I'm always looking for other forms of validation. And there were the things like the post-debate panels, but they're made up of like 12 people. The odds of those 12 people statistically accurately representing the population of undecided voters in this country 
is almost nil. And basically what you're relying on is the fact that a ideologically biased mainstream media organization will do a good job collecting a meaningful sample. And I, you know, I just can't get there, folks. To me, that's like a Ouija board. What it is useful in is building a narrative or helping achieve consensus on what the outcome of the debate was. And the outcome was that independents favored Trump. Now, in looking for other data sources, I found this. And again, probably a pretty small sample of people, but what it shows is absolutely fascinating. This is, I don't know what they call it. They get this little dial and they turn it up or down when they're happy when somebody's talking. And the yellows are independents here. And every time Kamala Harris opens her mouth, Republicans and independents equally hate what she's saying, but Democrats absolutely worship it. Now, again, this is a Fox News clip, but I'm sure they outsourced this. And Fox News pollsters are way left of us, so don't shoot the messenger. This isn't Fox News putting their thumbs on the, the scale, I don't think. But she's talking and talking and talking, and the Republicans and independents agree equally that they hate what she's saying. And what she's saying here is a bunch of stuff about how everybody should trust her economic plan because of Nobel laureates, because of professors, because of all the government agency folks that agree with it. Now, Trump's talking, and the independents and Republicans shoot up. Now, I will say the yellow line is not as high as the red line. The independents don't necessarily like Trump as much as Republicans, they just equally hate Kamala Harris. But the second he opened his mouth, the numbers started going up. They don't even really care what he says, to be honest with you. And it plays out over and over again here. Trump starts talking, red and yellow lines shoot up. And the blue lines, they just don't like what the orange man says. I also will say that blue line is not going down nearly as much as the blue line went up when Kamala Harris spoke. So I don't even know if all of these Democrats hate Trump as much as they love Kamala Harris. Again, I don't know how much stock you can put in that, but I just thought it's absolutely fascinating because it kind of validates the fact that in my numbers, independents have had at least a 20 point swing from where they were in 2020 going for Biden by double digits. Now they're going for Trump in this poll for the first time in a long time, by double digits. And that's the problem. When you rely on gaslighting and mainstream media and authoritative sources to maintain your grip, but then you burn all of those authoritative assets by forcing people to take vaccinations and by politically weaponizing law enforcement agencies and doing all the crazy stuff we saw over the last four years, this is what the race comes down to. Will Democrats maintain their grip on independent voters or are independent voters rebelling? I think that's what we're seeing. I hope you learned something. If you have any cool thoughts, post them in the YouTube comments or, you know, there's maybe a more likely chance that I'll see them on Twitter at Mark underscore R underscore Mitchell. Follow our main account too. It's got all the great stuff. Rasmussen underscore poll. Like the video and subscribe if you haven't already on YouTube or Rumble. Your support, and it's free, like really helps more people see our content and people are trying to stop our content from being seen. Heck, if you think there's something valuable in here, maybe even just click share and thanks for watching.